The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. For our social media minute, we're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. I wonder if our final story has a little to do with social media. Mm. Is image something that most of us just kind of strive uh, to be the ideal way to I think look the part? social media plays a huge role. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we say body positivity. That's the goal. But sometimes, sometimes. Mm. Even I think myself. especially South Korea. Yeah. yeah. We're held to Very these impossible standards. body conscious, but yep. sometimes in, in, not, in a not so healthy way. All right. We'll get to that in yep. just a moment but first the globes the golden globes mm. uh, it was a big moment it feels like for asian americans uh and mm. beef was really different yeah have you seen it um i i heard Dabbled the hype it. about it and then i got curious <laughs> yeah. and then i started watching the first episode and then i stopped because i just wanted to do a marathon ah. when i had the time so i <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen it. Actually. That's a good plan, Eric. Yeah. Because once the ball gets rolling, yeah. you can't stop. Which was most of us. And what was inherently different about the series is that yes, there is an Asian Americanness to mm -hmm. the plot, to the cast, yep. to the story. But it was so stylish in a way we thought, oh, we haven't seen that in a very, very long while. That's right. And, and the two protagonists yep, yep, yep. are Asians, <laughs> uh, Ali Wong and Stephen Yun. They're actually making Golden Globes history mm. because they both won Golden uh, Globes. Globe Awards on Sunday for Best Actress and Best Actor, respectively, in a limited series for their performances in this road rage <laughs> drama series, Beef. And uh, they are, in fact, the first actors of Asian descent to win in these respective categories. So Yon won Best Actor in a limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television. Okay, Stephen Yon has been garnering a lot of attention, not yeah. just in TV series, but in the film. Since Walking Dead. Since Walking yeah. Dead. So it's kind of a surprise that this is actually the first That's right. Golden Globe nomination mm -hmm. and then a subsequent win for Stephen Yun. He previously received critical acclaim for, you're right, uh, The Walking Dead. And then there was a film by Minari. the title Minari. Yes, <laughs> this was back in 2020. All right. Yeah, so the dual recognition for Ali Wong and Stephen Yun uh, marks the first Golden Globe nomination and win for both actors. Now, Yun was up against some stiff competition for uh. this year's award. Just to mention a few actors, Woody Harrelson, John Hamm, you know, uh, David Oyelowo mm. were among those nominated along with uh, Jan and uh, yeah, it was he was so happy. I get a lot of these emails first thing in the morning to just catch up on what's happened mm -hmm. in the last like 24 hours and uh, it highlight the highs and lows of Golden Globes, one of the emails, and went on to say watch Stephen Yun's speech. Yeah. There was something so inherently sweet about it, uh, sweet about it that That's he, right. he compared his <sighs> own like kind of babble to Frozen's plot. I thought that was yeah. kind of adorable. That's and right. then he did a shout out. To his wife, actually. I thought that was really sweet as well. Mm. So uh, a part of his speech went like this, quote, I'm just so thankful. I'm just the recipient of a long line of compassion and love and protection and goodwill. So I appreciate this. Joanna, I love you. You are my strength. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, and she was she accompanied him to the Golden Globes. They oh. were seen on the red carpet together, looking Look super that. elegant. A very special yep. moment. Uh, should we tell our listeners a little bit about beef? Well, for those of you who, well, there, there might be it. some listeners who are kind of wondering about the title of the series, like beef. <laughs> uh, beef based, To have beef with somebody means mm. to be sort of angry or upset at somebody for their actions or words. Mm. Uh, and in the series Beef, uh, Stephen Young plays Danny Cho, who mm. is a man who, uh, who basically has this repressed anger issues, which mm. he unleashes after he finds himself in this sort of like road rage scenario uh -huh. with Ali Wong's character. You know, Danny Cho, the character, he's poor. Mm. Ali Wong's character, she's rich. Yeah. But she has a whole bunch of issues of her yep. own. Yep. And, and they both have beef. <laughs> that's right. They're both super angry. And then <laughs> the two find their lives sort of intertwined in unexpected ways, which they get to find out. Uh, the series 
series was released on Netflix in April. It was directed by Korean American uh, Lee Sung Jin. Mm-hmm. Now the show topped Netflix's top ten charts for five consecutive weeks mm-hmm. after it was released and garnered some rave reviews. And uh, the series itself won Best Miniseries or TV Film mm-hmm. at the ceremony as well. Now with the Golden Globe win, we mentioned yesterday that it's award season. Uh, Yon is projected to be a strong contender for the Emmy Awards. Ooh. Uh, in which he's nominated for lead actor in a limited or anthology series. Uh, the 75th Emmy Awards are going to take place soon on January 15th in Los Angeles. All right. Keep your eyes peeled. I feel like something exciting is cooking up over there. Yep. As for the uh, Golden Globes, I mean, there's, of course, nominations for TV and then there's nominations in film. film. Looks like Oppenheimer took home oh, most yeah. of Succession the important. Succession was another show that took home <laughs> many, many awards. <laughs> yep. It was kind of funny because Barbie had the most nomination. They but took away two awards. Did they? Yeah. And I think one of it was Best Blockbuster and I'm like that kind of feels <laughs> like a compliment and an underhanded yeah. diss at the same time at these kinds of awards right. anyway but there you have mm-hmm. it the globes everyone yes on to our second buzzword of the day the Santana Ice Festival is back and it is attracting hundreds <laughs> of thousands of visitors it hasn't seen a this scale in years because of COVID you right know, COVID right. seems like a distant memory now but that was uh, it fast, wasn't right? so we long ago it real fast. right yeah. uh, anyways the Hwachon uh, Santana Ice Festival uh, opened over the weekend mm. and it welcomed over well over 200,000 visitors all together in just two days after its opening the festival is one of South Korea's most uh, representative popular winter events yeah I mean it gets a lot of love and hate mm-hmm. equal parts but it attracts a lot of yeah. attention period uh, maybe the highlighted experience is getting to enjoy some freshly caught suntan you can, you can yes, eat it right exactly so uh, you get to eat it you get to fish it um, on the morning of the the festival. Actually, the the opening of the festival, the the ice where the festival takes place was mm. full of people from all over the country who okay. love to fish or who don't even like to fish. It's, it's just, just uh, fun. fun, right? Just yeah. sitting on the ice and yeah. uh, you know catching fish through a hole <laughs> or watching people catch fish through the hole <laughs> yes that's right um, and there are a bunch of other events as well including this one takes place every year hands on trout catching event ah. so participants basically voluntarily jump into the icy water and uh, they're in short sleeves and shorts and they try the to catch of winter, these on top uh, of ice. mountain trout with their bare hands and uh, they get to eat it like you said uh, you can either eat them raw mm-hmm. or grilled and uh, yeah, I, I said it. There, there are no shortage of events that people can participate <laughs> in. There's snow sledding. There's also ice sledding as well. Ew. There's even an ice sculpture park oh. uh, that people can, you know, look around. Okay. I mean, since uh, the Itaewon tragedy, mm-hmm. it seems like we're d- doubling down on safety features. Yes. And it, it seems like Hwachongun County also took note of yeah, that. Yes. So the, the county conducts daily checks of the mm-hmm. ice and uh, it monitors the pumping facilities, waterways and drainage in real time using uh, CCTV cameras. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, they want to make sure that everybody's safe. It's not just cold, but it's ice. And people get nervous about staying Standing on a sheet of ice for long periods of time. Slipping and there are lots of falling. people, right? Yeah. On the same ice. Now, uh, temperatures are milder this winter. So the spacing between each fishing hole has been sort of set apart from the ah. previous two meters. It's now four meters mm-hmm. apart. Uh, and this is, of course, to prevent any accident from happening by overcrowding. All right, so the Hwachon Santana Ice yes. Festival will continue until January 28th. Yes, there's still plenty of time for you to get out there and enjoy. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Fish freaks me out. So this oh, is like really? my worst nightmare. Oh, fish fish freaks you out? I love to eat the it. The live fish? The I slippery. just don't want the live fish <laughs> near me. I've done plenty of fishing in my life actually my 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 you brave brave soul. my dad used to drag us along ah. on his fishing <laughs> trips everywhere we've cl- scaled down cliffs <laughs> in new zealand and we've gone like night fishing in sri lanka anyways good for you mr Park. <laughs> your daughter is on board Yay, thank you dad <laughs> all right and on to our final buzzword yep. this morning a recent study shows that nearly half of young korean women with normal or even low weight yes. 
try to shut off even more pounds. That's right. Um, one in six to seven Korean women, young women in their 20s, are actually underweight. And nearly half of uh, women who are underweight or even normal weight in the same age group in the thir- 20s mm. are still trying to lose weight. And uh, this finding was published in a research paper by the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency. Now, in contrast, I find this interesting. The ratio of men in their 30s and 40s trying to lose weight has actually gone down. Ah. Although the number of men in that age bracket uh, with obesity has gone up. They're they're gaining weight, but they're not trying to lose weight. They're not interested no. in getting fit because in that right. case, you're really talking about health risks. Right. But they're not interested. Mm. But women who are in their 20s, young and st- perhaps even thin yeah they're interested in losing more the irony of that can Mm. you give us uh, maybe the numbers yes so the paper released uh, by the kdca showed that 15 percent of women aged between 19 and 29 were underweight in 2021 Mm. with a bmi uh, body mass index of less than 18.5 now the ratio of underweight women of the same age stood at 15 percent between the years 2019 and 2021, which is up from 12%, tallied between 2016 and 2018. Now, the study showed that 16% of underweight women and 54% of women of normal weight (sighs) tried to lose weight when they didn't have to. Now, when the two figures were combined, almost half, or 46% of women of underweight or normal weight tried to lose weight. So that's dangerous for a different set of reasons. Now, more more young women tend to consider themselves overweight due to, let's be honest, social expectations yes. on super thin bodies. Mm-hmm. They're unrealistic. And even actresses have come forward and said that I would never recommend this yeah. to anyone else. That's right. And this is what leads to all of this unnecessary weight loss, mm. which is linked to various health issues. To mention a few, uh, you know, uh, you know, people who try to lose weight when they don't have to could have, uh, you know, issues with their cardiovascular system, mm. increase the likelihood of malnutrition, anemia, osteoporosis, Mm -hmm. and also, get this, low body weight before becoming pregnant could also cause habitual miscarriage. Those are serious health risks. I remember when I got optic neuritis in my Mm -hmm. mid-20s, I was surprised to find that uh, just in Korea, the statistics are really weird. Uh, It's when the nerves around your eyes get paralyzed. Uh, Most of the people who get this disease Mm -hmm. are in their 60s or higher, but for Korean women in their 20s, age is lower. Um, and, and for some insane reason, it's kind of an anomaly in the statistics. Mm-hmm. And the biggest culprit is we just didn't eat enough, for example, to stress down, yeah. pair them together, and it can have a host of diseases, as yeah. you said. So important to have a healthy lifestyle. But ironically, Balanced meals. men in their 30s and 40s are increasingly overweight. Yeah. And not increasingly losing. overweight and not trying to lose weight. All right. Healthy life. That should be our priority. Yep, in New yep. Year. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.